Hi, and thanks for joining us for another one of Family Marines videos. Uh, my name's Tom, and uh, today we're in our back showroom. Uh, we're going to talk about a Barletta pontoon. Now, this model happens to be called a Corsa. It's a 23 foot, and it's a UC, which stands for Ultra Lounge, with a co pilot's chair. And when we get inside, I'll show you what the Ultra Lounge and co pilot's chair is all about. But for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the outside of the pontoon. And I'm going to go through and explain a bunch of things for you and the features and benefits that this boat has. And then we'll go to the inside and then we'll talk about some pricing. So to start out with, um, on a Corsa, the tube diameter is 26 inch diameter tubes, which is one inch larger than the standard uh, 25 inch diameter tube that comes with an area or a cabrio where the Corsa and the Lusso have 26 inch diameter tubes. And you'll notice this real long aluminum rib going down the side. Uh, that's a splash rail. And so that helps keep the boat drier, keeps water from coming back in your face. And I kind of like it too because it's kind of a pontoon guard. And uh, it helps protect the pontoon from dock rash, things like that. So yeah, 26 inch diameter pontoons. Now one thing I want to point out about Barletta, well two things, number one, this being a Corsa, so in the, uh, uh, in the uh, models from Barletta, we got Aria, we got Cabrio, we got Corsa, and we got Lusso. So this is second from the top. And um, the one thing about the, the length of boat, now what Barletta does is they measure the tube length. So in other words, from the back of the pontoon to the tip of the pontoon, this is a 23-foot pontoon, and therefore it's called a 23-foot boat. But the deck length on this boat is a little over 25 feet. So as we use this one for an example, you'll see that the deck hangs out the back of the boat by about two feet, giving you much larger platform on the back of the pontoon for usable space. Boarding, debarking, getting the tubes ready for the kids. Um, there's all kinds of benefits to that huge platform on the back of the pontoon. Um, one thing, since we're standing right here, I wanted to point this out. This is a very attractive option that we put on boats. It's called a Vantage Pontoon Guard and Wrap. And what it is is a, a, a 3M uh, uh, vinyl graphic here that comes in many different colors and it's a four and a half inch what I call a rubber baby buggy bumper <laughs> it's about a quarter inch thick it's about four and a half inches tall and it's designed to protect the side of the pontoon so if this comes in oh golly 15 20 different colors this comes in two different colors black or gray uh, we do a lot of those it just enhances the appearance of the pontoon looks very very nice so getting back to the Corsa um, as I said 26 inch diameter pontoons heavy duty splash guards now often boat companies are using sheet metal splash guards you can't do that this to a sheet metal splash guard it'll just bend right down why is that important? Well, first of all, um, in our service department, often we see other brands of pontoons coming in for service. And let's take, for example, if you had sheet metal splash guards and you had an overloaded front end of the pontoon and it happened to be a rough day. And you're going out there and all of a sudden the boat does a nose dive, right? And it gets water all over the front. And what can happen with the aluminum splash fins is they literally bend right up out of the way, rendering them useless. So with the extruded aluminum heavy-duty splash guards, we don't have that problem. Um, I've seen the sheet metal splash guards, you bang them into a dock, the sheet metal rips, it tears, it gets sharp edges. I've got young children swimming around the bow of the boat. I don't want sharp edges on the bow of my pontoon. But this is equally as important. The reason that these splash fins are put on at an angle like that is if you did have 
an overloaded front end. And if you did do a nose dive, these are designed to help bring that bow of the boat back up on top of the water more quickly. You might still get wet up front, but it's going to get you back up on top of the water more quickly. Now, of course, this being a triple tune, it's less likely to do a nose dive because you have that third tube keeping the bow of the boat up on top of the water. Twin tubes, we tend to have more of a problem with nose diving than we do triple tunes. But that splash fin is equally as important. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I want to point out is Barletta has what's called a VIP. It's called a vibration isolation pad. So behind this skirting right here are saddle brackets, this M bracket, and they're multiple all the way down. And Barletta utilizes double I-beam construction, some I-beams, some C-channel, some box channel. But there's a lot of double I-beams making that structure incredibly stout, incredibly strong. A lot of companies use simply just C-channel all the way through the boat. And yes, ours are, met, are uh, uh, 16 inches apart. And then in the back of the boat, there's just multiple, multiple, multiple uh, cross members because that's where the weight of the engine is. You need the strength back there. And then, if you can see this black rubber pad, that's the vibration isolation pad. And yes, I am shocked at how much less vibration is transferred from the motor through the boat when you have vibration isolation pads. Uh, people don't re really get that until they maybe had other brands of boats that don't have it and then they get their first Barletta and it's like, oh man, wow, that's shocking how big a difference there is. So that's kind of the chassis of the boat. And by the way, the chassis on this boat has a lifetime manufacturer's warranty to it. Now, um, colors. We brought this boat in with a uh, metallic black and a charcoal gray. And there's other colors available. You can get a burgundy. You can get two different colors of blue. There's a matte black. There's a champagne. There's a white. And you can mix and match these colors. So in other words, if I wanted to order this boat in, in charcoal gray with black here, yes, I can do that. All right? A monotone is standard on this boat, so the second color is an option. Okay, now on top of that, we ordered in what we call a blackout package. So a blackout package is instead of the normal anodized aluminum that you get here, looks just like aluminum, just like everybody else out there, they anodize it in black. So our, our fencing frame, our, our uh, uh, rub rail, our skirting, our bimini top frame is all anodized black. So very, very attractive appearance. Okay, so up front we have pop-up stainless steel cleats. We have stainless steel corner castings. Now, a lot of companies use aluminum corner castings. And yes, that is the part of the boat that's going to hit the dock first. And yes, through 47 years of being in the pontoon industry, I have replaced dozens and dozens of these because they break. Not the stainless steel one, I'm talking about the aluminum one. I've yet to replace a stainless steel one, I've yet to have one of those break. Theory is, I guess you could do it. Okay, here we have our LED docking lights. This year they have a nice little pod with three uh, docking lights, of course the other one's over there. So you get a lot of light at night when you're pulling into your dock or your boat lift. LED navigation lights. And there's four of these little gadgets. Um, here's what you tie your boat bumper to. You know, the white thing that hangs on the side. And it's easily clips on and off, right? So you've got two in the front and two in the back. So you can easily clip your pontoon boat bumpers, throw them underneath the bench seat. Or you can get the option of the fender racks. And here's an example of the fender racks. That's what these are. These are standard on a Lusso. This happens to be a Lusso. But we have these available as an option on a Corsa. 
Okay, so moving down the side, um, we have our doggy dock view. I'll explain more about that when we get inside. Now, this being an ultra lounge, meaning that the back of the pontoon is normally open. In Minnesota, we have a law that says you have to be enclosed in order to ride back here while underway. So to make it legal to ride in this bench seat along the back, we have the option of stainless steel stern safety stanchions with chains. So now, because of these, yes, you can ride on the stern bench seat. I'll show you that when we get inside. This boat, you can tell, we did add the uh, fender racks to. And we also added a great big monster flagpole and flag. I don't know how much these cost, but they're pretty darn nice. It can easily be removed simply by pulling this pin, pop that out of there, unscrew it from the base, and it's really nice. It utilizes one of the three pre-drilled sockets for the lily pad diving board. In other words, there's another one of these under here that this flagpole mounts to. This is a stud that you pull out and you can mount a diving board. So all we got to do is screw it on if we want to, if you want the optional lily pad diving board. People really like them. They're a lot of fun. Now, this is a triple tune, as I mentioned. And one of the things that I want to point out, and by the way, the uh, center tube is also a 26 inch diameter. I want to point out what we're called lifting streaks. Lifting streaks are those long ribs. You see some holes in the back. That's to drain the water out of them. They're long ribs and they go all the way up to the front of the pontoon. And there's four of them. So there's two on the center tube and there's one on the outer tubes mounted on the inside. What do they do? Well, if you can imagine in your kitchen sink two halves filled with water one side you put a bowl, one side you put a cake pan. You put a pound of each weight in each one. Which one's going to sink farther? Well, the bowl is. Okay, so let's imagine that a bowl is like a round pontoon. It's going to sit down in the water when you add weight to it. So if you're trying to drive this thing across the lake, you're kind of plowing through the water, right? Where a cake pan with a pound of weight in it, you throw a motor on that, and it's going to skim across the top of the water. Now the pound of bejesus idea, because it's going to give you a very rough ride, where the round is going to give you a smooth ride, okay? But it's not going to perform all that well. So to help round pontoons perform better, we add what we call lifting streaks. Lifting streaks help lift the pontoon up on top of the water, creating less drag, which creates better performance, better fuel economy, better handling. So that's the purpose of a lifting streak. We're kind of jammed in here. I wanted to show you the boarding ladder over here. It's the new black anodized five-step deep reaching boarding ladder. But we're kind of jammed in, so I really can't get over there to show it to you. This particular boat has a 200 horsepower V6 Mercury. Um, awesome engine. That is an absolutely awesome engine. We love that engine. So let's take a look at the inside. Okay, uh, now we're on the inside. I'm going to start up in the front, in the bow. <laughs> so in the Corsa, we've got two very nice size forward-facing chase lounge bench seats. And yes, these are very large. They're large enough, easy, obviously, two adults, maybe two adults and a child. But the beauty of it is, is yeah, you can stretch out. You got pop-down armrests on each side makes it very very comfortable i can see myself it's is may 1st in minnesota the ice just came off the lake but i'm looking forward to doing this all summer long <laughs> right i love it so on each side we have chase lounge pop down armrests um, on the inside we have a couple of cup holders stereo speaker grab handle and a usb jack 
This is the new style C USB. There's a little LED blue light in there when you turn the lights on. And of course, you know, underneath the bench seats are all storage. Notice how our seats fold down out of the way, making it easier to access our storage compartments. Dry storage, so it has drains and vents. Okay. We did add the option of the interior lighting package in this one. So all the cup holders have a ring on the inside. You can see it. I don't have the battery on right now. That's an LED light in there. So all the cup holders have LED lights. And um, down in the base of the bench seat is another LED light. This one doesn't change colors. The cup holder lights do change colors. Those are RGB. Okay. Now, by the way, there are two different colored base vinyl in this boat. Uh, this one we did the dark gray. The other option is the light gray. And now, up in the front gate, we have what we call a doggy dock view. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if you can see my hand through there. That's kind of like a screen mesh. This way your pets can look through the door as you're driving across the lake or pulling up to the dock or see your wife up there and get all excited, right? Or your husband. So a doggy dock view, you, there's on the bow gate, and the port side gate is the doggy dock view. And they're color matched, by the way, to match whatever color of pontoon you choose. So, now, this is an option on the Corsa. This is a anchor storage locker. Standard on the Lusso, but optional on the Corsa. And we just like it so much because it's just a great place to put your wet anchor and rope. It's just perfect. So we always have it added to the courses whenever we order them. Now, of course, you still have your huge ski storage locker in the sole of the boat. And our cover should be in there. Yep, there it is. Now, I can lay down in there. It's huge. It's very, very large. The cover, a nice thing about the cover it does not have snaps. It has J-clips. So all around the top rail of the fencing, underneath the bottom, is an open slot. And those J-clips simply clip, 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 clip all the way around the pontoon, making it much easier to put your, pon uh, put your cover on and take it off. And yes, of course, there's tent poles that hold the center of the cover up to act like a tent. So if it rains, the water sheds. So that's the bow area. Now, as I said, this was a model called a UC Ultra Lounge with a co-pilot's chair. This is the co-pilot's chair. Swivels, reclines, slides back and forth, armrests pop up and down. If this were a U, not a UC, but a U, what it would have is another bench seat over here coming up to about the gate with a chase lounge facing backwards and a bench seat. Now, here's what we find. Often the gals come in and they say, no, I don't want to either face backwards or face the starboard side. I want to be able to swivel. I want my own captain's chair. I want to be able to recline it, put my feet up. Um, if I have guests in the back of the boat, I can spin it around, I can talk to them. I want to be next to my husband driving the boat, or vice versa. If the wife is driving, the husband can be here. It gives you more flexibility with that captain's chair in lieu of a bench seat. So that's what we find is the most popular type of seating in this pontoon co-pilot's chair. Next to the co-pilot's chair, there's a couple more cup holders. That whole unit is what we call a caddy. And the caddy has a couple of LED lighted cup holders. Down below that is a cell phone holder, another USB jack to charge your phone, and a little storage net for knickknacks and things down below. Now, the U in the nomenclature represents the ultra loud. And here's what an ultra lounge is. 
an ultra lounge by the way <clears throat> the ultra lounge for us oh golly uh there are times we struggle to keep these in stock because they're so popular uh, it is by far our most popular interior seating arrangement that we have why it's incredibly functional and i'm going to show you that right now so starting out um, we can easily fit three adults in this forward-facing bench seat and truth is here's what happens with my family um, my wife and her friends or my daughter they tend to always sit up front they like sitting up front and uh, it ends up where the guys are back here so what I like about this is I'm driving my my buddies are here we have this nice conversation pit they have their little conversation pit up front um, we can talk football and baseball and whatever the case may be hunting fishing whatnot you know we got the guy thing going on back here so yeah it makes a very very easy functional uh, uh, seating arrangement one thing I like a lot about this seating arrangement is notice the amount of room that you have to walk through here it's very large so it's easily passable from the stern of the boat to the cockpit of the boat now the flip-flop is able to lay forward giving us a very large rear sun deck so a lot of times we see people out on the pontoon maybe they're pulling the kids on the tubes or water skiing or wakeboards and often people are laying back here watching the kids while they're out having fun on the tubes so that's a great place to do that now let's say you go to the sandbar and the teenage girls say well I want a place to suntan okay simply lay that down flat now we've got a huge sun deck back here right but here's what happens with my wife and I oh before I go that far let me show you this um, we could also flip up this seat and this seat and now we have a forward-facing lounge lay that flip-flop down all the way just like I had it so that's really cool some people like to you know say you're driving across the lake and people don't like to look backwards they want to look forward so now we can have a place to lay and we can lay forward and watch where we're going so I can lay these down this, here I'll show you what my wife and I do a lot we go to the sandbar anchor and we flip this cushion up and that one flips up the same way now I have a really nice rear facing bench seat so we're at the sandbar and having a refreshing beverage and our friends are <laughs> walking around and having fun and chit-chatting and you know this is just a great area to do that so that's very very popular for my wife and i now the neat thing about it is i can take this flip-flop now i can seat three people in that bench seat i can seat three people in this bench seat i can have six in the ultra lounge driver co-pilot that's eight four at least four up front that's 12 and of course this boat will handle 13 people according to a little rating plate down there or 1788 pounds why does it say that 13 people persons or 1788 well what that means is you could have 17 people on board if they all weighed 100 pounds apiece but let's face it that's pretty unlikely um, but yeah so the Coast Guard says yeah 142 pounds per person uh, 100, uh, 1788 divided by 142 is roughly 13 people so that's what it's rated for now in the ultra lounge there's two forward facing speakers and there's two rear speakers out the back 
There is an LED interior light, one on each side. There is a USB jack for charging your phone over here. And this is what we call a slow down damn it handle. <laughs> slow down damn it handle. If your wife is sitting here and she reaches for this handle, she's gonna be, slow down damn it. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's the slow down damn it handle. Okay, now going out the back of the pontoon. We have a nice gate. So if we have little tykes and we want to keep them away from the rear platform of the boat while we're underway, we can simply close our gate. And now we have a nice secure area for little tykes in the cockpit. We have another grab handle here. Multiple cup holders in the Ultra Lounge that again have LED lights in them. Down here we have a battery selector switch. So we have off, we have battery number one, and we have combined, or, ba or both batteries. So in other words, this boat is going to have two batteries, one for the engine and one for the house. The house, of course, is all the accessories on board the boat. Now, it also has what's called a uh, VSR, voltage sensitive relay. This is, in my mind, critical. Um, first of all, the thing that I like about a battery on off switch is I could have all my accessories on on the helm. When I'm done using the boat, all I have to do is come back and turn that battery switch off and everything goes dead. I can't tell you how many times in the past when I didn't have a battery switch, I'd accidentally leave something on, come back a day or two later, and yep, battery's dead. Now I gotta charge it. So having a battery on off switch or selector switch is wonderful. But the VSR, okay, we got two batteries. Um, let's say that I go over to the sandbar and I got my radio on, my stereo on all day long. And so I got a fully charged cranking motor battery and I got my house battery is really low, right? Now when I start my engine, the alternator is going, would normally would sense that you know, we, they, that they even themselves out and the alternator would send the equal amount of voltage to each battery, thus overcharging and destroying this battery because it already has a full charge and taking a long, long time to charge this one. So a voltage sensitive relay says, okay, we don't need to send this battery any juice from the alternator. We need to send all the juice to this battery bringing that back up to charge and not ruining and destroying the starting motor battery. So yeah, that's uh, very, very important for a, a dual battery system to have a VSR. Um, I didn't mention that we do have a standard ski tow pylon in this boat. And our gas fill is right ahead of the engine. I like that because um, it doesn't matter what side of the gas pump I pull up on, it's centered in the boat so I can easily access the gas fill from either side of the pontoon. Let's take a look at the helm. Okay, on the helm. Um, the first thing I want to make note of is that it is an elevated helm. It's up off the deck about four inches higher. And of course the reason that that's important is this way the, the captain is a little bit higher than the passengers that may be sitting up in the front giving the captain a better bird's eye view when he's pulling into a dock or something like that, right? Now, something that's very, very important in a pontoon is the amount of leg room. And if you'll notice, Barletta gives us an immense amount of leg room. I can stretch out. I can be comfortable driving across the lake with my legs extended like this. So often we see pontoons where you hardly get any leg room at all and it tends to be very comfortable after a short period of time. So to be able to stretch my legs out, I feel, is critical. And then we have this nice little non-skid mat. It says Corsa with some racing stripes. That makes it go faster, right? Okay, so that's the, hel the, the elevated helm. Oh, and by the way, out here, um, we do have an interior light there. Turn it on and off right from there. Our glove box, and inside the glove box are all the circuit breakers for all the accessories. 
So if we have an accessory that's not working, the first thing we check is to see if one of those little buttons popped out. That tells us we blew our circuit breaker. And then of course down here is our pet food tray. Isn't that nice? We are pet friendly with Barletta's. I love that. <laughs> and I didn't show this when I was talking about the um, bench seats, the chase lounges up front, but this is a table. Now it has two legs, I won't pop them both down, I'll just put one down. So you extend your legs, now you got a nice table. So for that reason, uh, the, the, the pedestal table that you often see in the bow of the boat, we don't sell a whole lot of those. We sell some, some people still like them. But because of this table, yeah, we don't sell a whole lot of pedestal tables. Now, back to the helm. Um, driver's seat slides back and forth, swivels, reclines, armrests pop up and down. We can see all of our lighted panel switches and they will turn different colors as you turn them on and off. From like a light purple to a bright blue, on and off. So we've got our courtesy light, now that's up underneath the bimini. When you open up your bimini, there's a light that shines down into the cockpit. Our floor lights, that's all of our cup holder lights and lights up front, lights in the back. Panel lights, that's for our dash. Navigation anchor lights, that's our running lights. Docking lights here, a couple of extra accessory switches, horn button, another accessory switch, and a bilge pump. So yeah, this being a triple tune, um, it does have a bilge pump. Now that bilge pump is an automatic pump so it has a float switch on it. So let's say you're not um, on board the boat and you get a bunch of rain down into the ski locker. As the water level goes up, the float switch will turn the pump on, pump the water out, and as the water goes down, it'll shut the pump off. On, off, all by itself. But if you wanted to check it manually to see if there's any water in the bilge, you can hit the bilge pump switch. That'll override the float switch and turn the pump on, and if there's any water in there, it'll pump it out. Okay. Tilt wheel, five position tilt wheel. Um, we have a tachometer with a multifunction LCD screen. So right here we have fuel, we have engine hours. I can toggle through here, gallons per hour, my trim gauge, uh, another digital tachometer, um, a digital speedometer, oil pressure, uh, 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 lake temperature, uh, battery voltage, uh, fuel gauge. This doubles as the same. Don't, don't ask me why they have two of them, but they do. <laughs> this is our GPS driven speedometer. So this is driven by GPS. Not the old pedal style tube, you know the one that had that little thing that hung down at the back of the boat with the hose going all the way up to the back of the speedometer that constantly failed. Um, so this is GPS driven speedometer, a lot more accurate than what the old style pedo tubes were. Here we have a wireless cell phone charger so you slip your phone in there. Now the nice thing I like about that is it's in the shade. In the past I've taken my cell phone and let's say I set it over here and it's sunny. In about half an hour, because that phone is black, it's going to overheat on a hot sunny day. Yeah, you don't want that happening. So this is a great place, even when you're not using your phone, just to store it. And of course it'll charge. And then down below is another USB jack that you can charge your phone with the cord. And that USB jack is hooked to the stereo. So you can listen to your music that's on your phone from your stereo. And by the way, here we're showing one of our lighted cup holders and I can spin this knob and change color. A whole bunch of different colors. I can push the knob and it'll start into different modes. Now I turned them off. There we go.
See, there we go. Push it twice. And now it starts to change colors all by itself. Bringing me back to the 70s, going to the disco. <laughs> okay. Um, stereo. Very nice. Very, very nice sound system. Um, uh, yeah, this is by Audison. It's a very top shelf sound system. Bluetooth, of course, so you don't have to have the cord hooked to your cell phone to listen to your music. Okay, um, standard is a 7-inch Simrad touchscreen. So right now I've got it on the uh, engine information. So I've got a speedometer, a tachometer, both a digital readout and an analog readout. I have a fuel gauge. I have a trim and tilt gauge. I have a voltmeter. I have a speed over ground. I have a digital depth. I have a water temperature. I have a gear, neutral, forward, reverse. I have percentage of fuel. I have a voltmeter and a GPS, but we're in a metal building, so we're not going to get anything inside this metal building. Okay. So, SOG, speed over ground. All right, that's what we have it set on. Now, this being a DTS 200 horse, DTS, what does that mean? That means digital throttle and shift. Instead of cables running from the control box back to the engine to shift it and throttle it, this is fly-by-wire, okay? So it, this throttle is just incredibly smooth to operate. If you're used to the old mechanical control box, uh, some of them were a little bit stiff. This is really smooth. Again, it's all fly-by-wire. Now, an option that's included with a DTS, if we touch, it says vessel control. Here it says mercury, there it says vessel control. We touch that, and that little menu pops up. We've got cruise control, troll control, smart tow. You can use cruise control just like in your car. And troll control and smart tow, I really never use those. But active trim, right now it says off if I touch it. It'll go to status off, and I can touch it. Oh, I'm sorry, touch enable, and now it's on. What is active trim? Um, active trim is automatic trim. So, let's take an example. We're pulling away from the dock. Our motor is tucked all the way under. We nail the throttle. As the boat's coming up on plane, the power trim is automatically raising the engine to the proper height depending on the speed that we go all automatically isn't that nice now you don't have to mess with this button to trim the motor out every time that you uh, get her up on plane or lower it down every time you come off of plane because as soon as you slow down to an idle the motor will automatically tilt back down when you go through a corner you start to turn the motor will automatically trim down. When you come out of the corner and straighten it out, the motor will automatically trim back up again, all by itself. Uh, I love active trim. It's absolutely wonderful. And then we have three different profiles that we can set via the switch that's on the con uh, control box. We can go from profile one, two, three, four, or five, depending on how high we want the motor to trim depending on how fast we're going, things like that. I can turn the trim on and off with the power button that's on the, on the uh, control box. Again, I can raise and lower the profile. I can also raise and lower the profile by hitting the plus and minus button. I can disable it. I can enable it. So that's the active trim. If you've not had active trim, if you've been a boater for a long time, and the first time you get active trim, you're going to love it. It's, it's awesome. Okay, the nine little buttons in the upper left-hand corner bring us to the main menu of the Simrad. Now, I was on the engine, the Mercury, okay, so that's where I was. Now, I'm going to go to my GPS. Again, it's not going to read in here because I, 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 um, we have a metal building. It says we're in Kalamazoo, Michigan. <laughs> I don't think we're there. As soon as we get outside, yeah, it'll dial itself in and we'll be in Wilmer, Minnesota. 
But we can mark our waypoints. We can do all kinds of different things with the GPS. And if we were on a lake, let's see if we can find a lake and then we'll zoom in a bit. It does show depth. You gotta zoom in quite a bit. Well, I'm not gonna waste your time, just trust me. It gives you a digital readout of the depth of the water. And we can mark our waypoints and things like that. Okay. Now we also have our depth finder. That is going to be, it's going to show bottom structure. It's going to show depth in a digital in feet. It's going to show water temperature. Okay. Um, we're not in the water right now, so it's not going to show anything, but it'll, it'll show us the bottom. It'll show us fish. If you're a fisherman, it'll show you fish. It also has down scan. Okay, so that is for the fisherman who wants to get more accurate with what, where, what and where his fish are. Does not have side scan. Some of the menus that it offers here, side scan, nope, we don't have side scan on this one. Nav, that's like a radar. Nope, we don't have radar on this one. But we can do a combination of the two. There's our GPS and there's our uh, depth. Here's another one, just the opposite. <laughs> All depends on what you like there. But normally, yeah, I leave mine on here. I find, rather than looking at these gauges up here, it's easier to look at those gauges on there when I'm driving across the lake. So that's the Simrad. Okay. Um, green light is telling us it's in neutral. We do have our trim and tilt, which will override the active trim if we wanted to. We actually have a start stop button on the control handle. Well, of course we have our ignition switch down here, our safety lanyard, our up and down button for our electric bimini top. Oh, did I mention Bim Barletta's have an electric bimini top standard on all models. Yes, electric bimini top, not the manual ones. And then over here we have a power outlet so you can plug in your, uh, say, handheld spotlight or maybe a 12-volt blender. Yeah, 12-volt blender. Hey, I like that idea. Margaritas. Ah. Down below that is our fire extinguisher, standard from Barletta. Anytime you have a boat with a built-in fuel tank, Coast Guard requires you have a onboard fire extinguisher. Okay, um, one thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about the, the engine, the 200-horse DTS, Digital Throttle and Shift. Um, anytime you get a Barletta with a 200 horse or larger, it requires, it's not an option, it requires power assist steering. Uh, a couple of years ago, I had a pontoon with a 200 horse on it that had the standard run-of-the-mill hydraulic steering. Uh-uh, won't do it. Took that motor off, put a smaller motor on. It was impossible to steer. I mean, I was having to put a crowbar in the steering wheel to get it to go left. It just wouldn't go. There's so much steering torque created by the right-hand rotation of the propeller causing steering torque that you have to have power assist steering on a 200 horse or larger. It is required, okay? So, um, that pretty, oh, a couple of things I wanted to talk about real quick. Um, Karen maintenance, um, the vinyl, for example, these guys use an incredibly heavy duty, thick vinyl that has a large amount of UV inhibitor built into it. Um, to, the, the, the reason for that is if you were, let's say you worked in our shop for a month and saw the used pontoons coming in for service or trading, it's so common to have used pontoons come in, the vinyl is cracked and torn because the sun deteriorates it so bad, badly, it becomes brittle and easily tears, the stitching comes out. Um, it's just, it, uh, we really struggle with that. When we get a trade-in, uh, we generally have to send that boat out to the upholstery shop and have it reupholstered 
don't, uh, because people don't want to buy a used pontoon with the seats all tore up or sun bleached. You've seen, especially up here, um, you've seen pontoons where it looks like it's a light tan. You might have a cream colored upholstery, but the, it's, it's like a light tan. That's sunburn. That's the UV light hitting the top of this and literally baking it and drying it out, and that can't be repaired. It has to be reupholstered. That gets expensive. Um, so for that reason, Barletta uses a, UV, a large amount of UV inhibitor in the upholstery. Now, I take it a step further because I'm a little anal. Once a year, I treat my boat with a product that we have on our parts and accessory department called Boat Bling Vinyl Sauce. Vinyl Sauce has, a, again, a large amount of UV inhibitor built into it. It keeps the vinyl soft and supple, and I find it makes it easier for the vinyl to clean. Now, I, I like this stuff so much, I take it home. I use it on my vinyl lawn furniture. I use it on my uh, uh, garden tractor tires because the rubber tires tend to uh, dry rot in it from the sun. I got an old farm ball with you know, big tires on it, and I use it on that because those tires are expensive, baby. Um, I don't want them dry rotting. So once in the spring, I treat them with this uh, boat bling uh, vinyl sauce, and it reflects the ultraviolet light from the sun. I'm here to tell you, if you did that once a year in the spring, you'll bring this boat back in 20 years, and that upholstery will look just like that. It's that good of stuff. It's wonderful. I love it. Uh, but don't get it on the flooring. Now, the flooring is seagrass. Seagrass is made of a PVC material. PVC is not porous like vinyl. And the product that I'm talking about, the boat bling, will not absorb into the seagrass flooring, and it'll get slippery. And yeah, you don't need that. So what I do is I spray it on a rag, I wipe it on the seat. I spray it on a rag, I wipe it on the seat. Okay? Um, so that really covers the um, Barletta 23 Corsa UC uh, Ultra Lounge with a co-pilot's chair. So if you have any more questions, feel free to give Corey or I a call. Our phone number is area code 320-222-BOAT. That's 222-2628. Our website is familymarineboats.com. And if you'd like to learn more about some of the models that we have, we have a very large quantity of videos on our YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube, search Family Marine Wilmer, W-I-L-L-M-A-R, you'll see our icon, click on our icon. We do videos on Sweetwaters, on the Barletta Aria, the Barletta Cabrio, the Corsa, the Lusso. Uh, lots of videos on how to help you choose the right size boat, right interior, right horsepower, twin tube or triple tube, trailer, sea legs. Uh, there's all kinds of training videos on there to help you decide what boat is best for you. So uh, thank you very much for taking the time to watch my video. I know I can get a little long-winded, but hey, I'm a salesman. What do you expect, right? <laughs> uh, so again, thank you very much and appreciate you watching.